1170 The Answer and AM 1170 TheAnswer.com. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is the co-host Jason Hall with Team Home Loans. We are, you are listening to Whistle Wednesday. And in studio, J.C. Agajanian. I think got I finally it. got it right. I'm getting you, better at it. You nailed it, Jason. I don't say sit and set, and, and I say everything else that Kyle uh, knows. But uh, let's talk some real estate, J.C. What's going on in the real estate market here in San Diego? Man, so far it's been another great year to be you know, buying, selling, or working in the industry okay. in San Diego this year, for sure. Now, we know with the election, it's yep. hard to always believe the media. Right. The media is always saying one stuff on election. People are like, OK, is everything really true? Are they going one sided? You know, a lot of that stuff. But we also hear that in real estate. So yeah. you hear a lot of people in the media go, hey, it's the holidays. Don't think about selling your house. You know, just wait for the buyers to come back out. You know, wait for spring. So why, if you're a possible seller, would you want to sell your house going to the holidays? Yeah. Well, let's let's address that general notion first. I mean, we're in San Diego, right? So. So there's really no weather issues <laughs> you know, I mean, in San Diego in like of, there is in other parts of the country. Yeah, in other parts of the country, it's very real. Like People are not going to go out of their way you know, and deal with snow and storms and stuff to, to go shopping unless there's some serious pressure on them to move. Can you right? even imagine that? I mean, oh, as a San Diego native, I mean, I've talked to some family, and they're like, they literally do not leave the house from like November 15th to like February 1st. Yeah. Like- I, I can't even imagine. I can that. vouch for that. I lived for one year in uh, northern Idaho in Coeur d'Alene. That, that's exactly what I was thinking was but Idaho. <laughs> you were stuck in the house for nine months. That's why you got to have like a 5,000 square foot home in these parts of the country. <laughs> you, and you literally work from home, from the internet, and just, you know, yeah. enjoy, relax, and you just never leave. Exactly. Right? Because you exactly. have to uncover your car. You have yeah. to find your car and, first. And the, the, the tricky thing is when it starts to be spring and it looks sunny outside, and you think, I'm going to go for a walk. And so you just put on a light jacket and you walk outside and it's still like 10 degrees outside. And I can't even imagine. I can't so that's, imagine. That's ex- exactly why I came back to San Diego. My, yeah. my one tip for everybody, if it ever snows in San Diego, do not leave your home. Pretend yeah. like you're in Idaho or New York, right? Yeah. Literally just bunker in. You do not want to be on the road when it's raining, let alone if it ever snows in San Diego. Oh. But JC, you're right. So the weather's a lot better here yeah. in San Diego. So that's definitely... So I mean, here in San Diego... It- there's a, a marginal impact on the volume of homes that are sold, you know, say fourth quarter versus, you know, say late spring, early summertime. So percentage wise, like 20 percent, maybe 22 percent gets sold no. in the fourth quarter. Um, what would you say? Yeah, pretty so much, much low 20s. I think that's is what, what we're Kyle talking said. about. Low- and the, and the, the peak is like high 20s, maybe 28, 29. So there's not a huge difference in any one quarter. You know, if, if a, an even spread is 25 in each quarter, it's, it's, it doesn't change that much here. The only real thing, I think, is just people are kind of busy, and they just, ah, I can do it later. But, um, yeah, I mean, some of the—we've got, like, a few nice bullet points to, to talk about as far okay. as reasons why it's actually a good idea. Um, so kind of launching off what we just talked about, um, there's, there's still a lot of buyers out there, and the ones that are looking at this time of year, they're serious. They're not just kind of— learning the market or checking things out like if people are are you know shopping now they're not worried about you know things holding them back they've decided this is the right time in their life and they're going to go and they're ready to buy so they're true serious buyers not just shoppers wanting to walk through your house totally gotcha another cool thing is that a lot of people do have this mentality maybe they're misinformed by somebody else that they're working with or something so they may hold their property back and wait but the thing that's cool about that is that if you're considering selling your home you're gonna have less competition and you know what that means less competition means better could, price for you could be better price supply and demand that that's a great feature exactly do, money, do you, right? on your list you guys does anybody ever sell for tax reasons you know, for end of the year type of thing. I mean, definitely with some of the investors, I've seen stuff like that where someone wants to or needs to sell, say, in 2016. Yeah. So that's an additional benefit that you might want to sell and look. And that's why you want to have a, a, a tax planner, you know, and a real estate planner really be ready when Absolutely. you go to look to sell your home. Because so many people I've heard, they sold their house a day early and paid like 50 grand because they picked the oh, wrong agent. Man. And the person just wanted to close the deal. Can you imagine 50 grand? in taxes because you one day and i've had them go hey can i go back and can i I go no you know they they get referred to me after the fact i'm like (laughs) it's too late you can't go back on the government right it's like it's done you know sometimes we'll actually see little uh agent only remarks kind of saying hey if you can close by x date 
you know, we'll give, you know, a bonus to your buyer or we'll give you an added commission or something because those dates are important to people. Yeah. So, yeah, good okay. point, Jason. Um, another thing to kind of piggyback on, you know, fewer, comp- less competition for sellers this time of year is also the conventional wisdom is a lot of people just push it off and say, you know what, let's deal with it in the new year or whatever. But then you're going to have this blossom, you know, growth of inventory, which is going to be negative if you're thinking about selling, right? So you want to take advantage of when things are a little bit lower. Um, but ahead of that, kind of get ahead of the game and, and kind of go contrary to, to conventional wisdom, right? I mean, generally people that, that do really well, whether it's in business or, or in any other areas of their life, try to, try to zig when other people are zagging, right? right? Warren Buffett. Prime you example. Got it. He tells everybody when everybody's selling, he's a buyer. Mm-hmm. And when everybody's buying, he's a seller. And he's done pretty well as a billionaire here in, in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and it, uh, cool. If this is just like a side note, but homes generally like show better when they're decorated for Christmas and or whatever holiday people celebrate. You know, you know like, that's, you know, I haven't really heard, thought about that, but you're absolutely right. Now that you say that, JC, yeah. I think people feel when they come in and they're seeing the Thanksgiving, they're seeing Christmas, they're seeing the different holidays, they're like, wow, I feel like this is home. They can imagine right? their family there. You can imagine that. Yeah. I, I think that's a great, great point. What and that's why you're one of the top agents, there, man. <laughs> nice. Thanks, man. I mean, what makes what feels more homey than like a Christmas tree in the corner and Christmas lights out front, you know? I, I remember- Pies, cookies. Yeah. You know. I mean, it seemed, it's pretty cool when you look, because we look through, as agents, uh, through the MLS every day, right? So we're always looking at photos of homes for our clients. And it's kind of neat when you see something that's like different. It, it actually interrupts the pattern of just home, 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 home. You're like, oh, you know, it's, it's just anecdotal. Be like, oh, that's cute or whatever. It looks nice. Right. And that's yeah. why at the Whistle team, you guys have a, a staff person who literally takes professional oh, yeah. pictures. That's his main job yep. is handling that versus grabbing your iPhone or your Android. <laughs> like 90% of the agents out there me? that list their home and they go click, 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 <laughs> and they think they're a professional and they don't take the little extra money to market your number one asset for 99% of us is our home. Yeah. Why not use a professional? Jason, you know I live in Point Loma, so there's some expensive homes there. And a few months back, I remember looking at a property for a client, and I'm I'm not exaggerating or joking right now. I could see in the reflection of a mirror an agent standing there with oh, their yeah. cell phone. Kyle, Kyle <laughs> sends those and posts those a but lot. But this is like a million dollar property. I know. I mean, wow. this I know. is this is not like you're, you're paying an agent fifty to sixty grand to sell your house. Yeah, and they're taking a picture Hire on a their phone, please. and they can see in the mirror. <laughs> right? We got Leon in here again. You know, he's a professional. He knows how to see stuff, and that's right. one of the things you do is you catch things like that. Exactly. And if you're an agent and you're trying to go cheap, at least hire a professional oh, who can man. look at your photos and go, oop, you probably should take this one over again. Let's get a bit, bit of different stuff. Would you agree with that, Leon? Yeah, and it's actually amazing how many uh, inquiries we have had from real estate agents or people helping a, a real estate agent friend saying, hey, can you help us with these photos? We want the the beautiful ocean in the background. And uh, we took these pictures with a phone, but you know, we, we don't have a good <laughs> picture of this ocean. You know, It's just all white back there. Yeah. Um, but a good professional <laughs> photographer can go into any property and go, okay, this is exactly what needs to be done. Here's how I need to light it right. and do it properly. Um, and it's sad because most of the people that come to us and ask for those types of photos to be retouched, Before they don't have the mistakes. budget for it. Right. And that's that's kind of the thing, right? Like they didn't have the budget for a great photographer. They didn't carve out the budget for a good photographer. They certainly don't have a budget to pay for the retouching, which is not going to look as amazing as having a great photographer. Well, well, yeah. And that's yeah. why you want a professional right. real estate team course to list your home who has the budget who's already put that in there totally and who does tons of transactions so they can fit that in right they already account for that budget Mm -hmm. they're not needing that money to make their mortgage payment like a lot of agents who only sell six seven homes a year where the whistle team sells 400 homes a year 400 homes that's That's amazing amazing, where's that bell sound I get all kinds of stuff right all right what what are the other reasons here i know we've got Uh, you know just it's interesting that um Contrary to, to maybe conventional wisdom, again, like a lot of people actually will take a little extra time off during this time of year, you know, maybe have room for more vacation days that haven't been used um, and they can log those out and actually do a little bit more shopping. So a lot of people think, oh, people are busy with family and pre- preparing, but a lot of people actually have extra time to go shopping. Um, you know, of course, 
uh, we can always restrict showings and make sure that we're not going to be inconveniencing a seller, right? Because sure. you know people are busy, and so we uh, you know recognize that. Um, but yeah, I mean that's that's a good point right there. All right, um, we're, we're getting close here. We got about a minute left in this segment, my friend. What other great tips? Can this you is give kind of the last one of us. The last thing I'll I'll go with right there on on reasons to sell during the holidays is that you know you can sell for more money. Yeah. Sell for more money. Sell All for right. more money and not have to physically move until January or February. So you can set it up now, maximize that that price, meet the the, the smaller uh, competition, and then still not mess up your holiday season. You so know? get it in escrow yep. during the holidays, but not close and until the And as a seller, you year. can say, you know what, uh, 30 days from now works, or you know what, let's, let's say 45. You're a little bit more in control as a seller, and you can dictate that and close it when it's convenient for you. Yeah, because seller are setting the terms right now. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I mean, yep. we still have a huge shortage of supply, and the seller set the terms. Again, you're listening to 1170 AM, The Answer. This is Whistle Wednesday. We'll be right back. We're going to touch base a little bit more on sellers, but also coming up with Safer Law, Lawrence the Man. We'll talk about some tips I can't even think of right now, Lawrence. I apologize. We'll be right back. Let me lock you in ground. AM 1170 The Answer at am1170theanswer.com.